So this is the Manjaro user guide. The license for this is <clears throat> attribution share alike 4.0. Here's the address, which is right over here. And it says, um, let's see. So I see this authorizes you to exercise in all media formats, waives or agrees not to assert any right or authority to forbid you from making technical modifications necessary. Okay, this looks like I can share this as long as I credit it. I looked at this in the Vivaldi browser. It's a good, uh, it's a good browser. Okay, so again, this is the Manjaro user guide, the Manjaro development team, Creative Commons, core, uh, the core team, Philip. Muller, uh, Mueller, owner, project leader, project management, coordination. Um, I don't know how to say these names, so I'm afraid I'm going to mispronounce all these. So you could just, if you're interested, I'll scroll slowly. Acknowledgements, the awesome community on forum.manjaro.org and hashtag Manjaro. A note about Manjaro and Arc. Manjaro is based on another distribution called Arc Linux. As such, it is also able to draw software packages from the community-maintained Arc user repository, AUR. However, please note that Manjaro is not ARC. And any inquiries about the Manjaro operating system should be directed towards the Manjaro forums and Internet Relay Chat IRC channels alone. For example, although Ubuntu is derived from Debian and therefore shares some similarities with its parent, there are still substantial differences between these operating systems and how they work. Such as, sorry about that. Such as the case with Manjaro, which is far from just being an easy to install or pre-configured ARC operating system. Here are some of the key differences between the Manjaro and ARC operating systems. Manjaro is developed independently from ARC and by a completely different team. Manjaro is designed to be accessible to newcomers, while ARC is aimed at experienced users. Manjaro draws software from its own independent repositories. These repositories also contain software packages not provided by ARC. Manjaro provides its own distribution-specific tools, such as the Manjaro Hardware Detection, MHWD Utility, and the Manjaro Settings Manager, MSM. Manjaro has numerous subtle differences in how it works when compared to ARC. To reiterate, although Manjaro is indeed an ARC derivative, it is not ARC. Contents, Introduction, Getting Manjaro, Downloading Manjaro. Checking a downloaded disk image for errors, writing a disk image. Section 2, installing or chapter 2, installing Manjaro, booting the live environment, some useful definitions, dual booting with Microsoft Windows, assisted installation methods, manual installation on a BIOS system, manual installation on a UEFI system, encrypting your partitions. Chapter 3. Welcome to Manjaro, the Manjaro desktop, getting help, maintaining your system, and index. 129, 
130 pages. Introduction about Manjaro. Manjaro is a user, I hope I'm saying that name right, is a user-friendly GNU Linux distribution based on the independently developed Arc Linux. Within the Linux community, Arc itself is renowned for being an exceptionally fast, powerful, and lightweight distribution that provides access to the very latest cutting-edge software. However, Arc is also traditionally aimed at more experienced or technically minded users. As such, it is generally considered to be beyond the reach of many, especially those who lack the technical expertise or persistence required to use it. Developed by a worldwide team, Manjaro aims to provide all of the benefits of Arc Linux combined with a focus on user friendliness and accessibility. Manjaro is suitable for newcomers as well as experienced Linux users. For newcomers, a user-friendly installer is provided, and the system itself is designed to work fully straight out of the box with features including pre-installed desktop environments, pre-installed graphical applications to easily install software and update your system, pre-installed codecs to play multimedia files, pre-installed access to the latest games. Features. Manjaro shares many of the same features as Arch, including speed, power, and efficiency, access to the very latest cutting and bleeding edge software, a rolling release develop model that provides the most up-to-date system possible without the need to regularly install a new operating system release. Access to the ARC user repositories. The versatility to be shaped and molded in every respect to suit personal taste and preference. However, Manjaro boasts a few extra features of its own, including a simplified user-friendly installation process, automatic detection of your computer's hardware, e.g. graphics cards, automatic installation of the necessary software, e.g. graphics drivers for your system, dedicated software repositories that deliver fully tested and stable software packages, support for the easy installation and use of multiple kernels. The first screen is the Welcome to Manjaro screen. See what Control Plus does. There you go. Maybe you can see that better. The Welcome to Manjaro screen. We, the Manjaro developers, hope that you enjoy using Manjaro as much as we enjoy building it. Important note, end of 32-bit support. Starting with Manjaro 17.1, 32-bit support has been dropped and only 64-bit builds of the disk images will be released. If you are using a 32-bit system, a new project called Manjaro 32 has recently been started, but is still in development for a list of some Linux distributions that still support 32-bit systems, please see this page. Uh, Forum.manjaro.org list of distributions for 32-bit. And you can see there's a footnote link, manjaro32.org. Part 1, Getting Manjaro. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. Downloading Manjaro. Manjaro Editions. There are four official editions of Manjaro available for download, as well as a number of unofficial community editions. 
with the exception of the Architect Edition, that's the one I'm probably going to set up, they come complete with a pre-installed desktop environment and a selection of popular software applications. And either, either of these would be a great choice for anyone who wants to try out Manjaro on a live CD without having to install it first. If you have the time, it's worth taking each for a test run to see which you like best. To download Manjaro, it's manjaro.org, get Manjaro. When you purchase retail software, it generally comes on a disc, whether a CD or a DVD. A live CD has a version of the operating system that will run without needing to be installed. This is a feature of most GNU, Linux, and BSD-based operating systems. Let's see the choices. XFCE. The XFCE desktop environment is designed to be lightweight while retaining a familiar desktop interface. If you're not sure which edition to choose, this one is a good bet. XFCE edition disk image files start with manjaro.xfce. KDE, that's the version that I'm probably going to install. This version includes the K desktop environment. It offers a highly integrated environment with plenty of functionality and options. Excuse me. It is also highly customizable and offers a slightly different feel than the other editions. KDE edition disk image files start with Manjaro-KDE. No, this edition of Manjaro includes the GNOME desktop, which is part of the GNU project. It offers an unconventional but intuitive desktop aiming to help productivity. It comes with a very complete and aesthetically coherent set of applications to fill the most common needs. GNOME Edition disk image files start with Manjaro-GNOME. Architect, the one I'm planning on installing. This edition does not come with a pre-installed desktop like the other three. Instead, you are offered the opportunity to tailor your Manjaro installation the way you want it to be by choosing which packages to install. It can also be used to install any of the other available editions, either official or community ones. This edition is not meant for beginners, but more for intermediate and advanced users. Architect Edition disk image files start with Manjaro-Architect. Manjaro Community Editions. In addition to the four main Manjaro editions, there are a number of editions that have certain software or desktop environments pre-installed. This user manual assumes you are using the XFCE version and all screenshots will be from this. However, the installation process and other software works in exactly the same way. The edition names should give a clear indication of the desktop environment or window manager they install. Unless you have a strong preference, we suggest you stick with the XFCE version. You can, of course, change later or install other desktop environments too. There are many community editions to choose from, including Cinnamon, LXDE, Deepin, Budgie, Mate, and many others. The complete list is available at uh, manjaro.org community editions. Downloading a disk image. Every release of Manjaro is available for download, whether the current stable release or upcoming preview releases. When you visit the download page, you will find a link to each of the four main editions as well as a checksum file for each. A checksum can be used to check the integrity of the disk image file you download to make sure it hasn't been corrupted during the download. This will be covered in the next chapter. Stable releases of Manjaro are intended to be used by the general public. 
so this will be the appropriate choice for the majority of users. The current Manjaro release can be downloaded from the Get Manjaro page. See the footnote. Development releases of Manjaro give you a glimpse of what is to come soon in the stable releases. release. Do keep in mind that it is not as solid as the stable release and should not be used on a production machine. It is mainly intended for testing purposes. The latest development release available can be downloaded from the Manjaro Preview Releases page. See the footnote. Welcome to Manjaro. KDE Edition and the GNOME Edition. And I will most likely install KDE. It's just about as light as XFCE and is almost as featureful as the GNOME Edition, from what I understand. Correct me if I'm wrong. Checking a downloaded disk image for errors. Before burning your downloaded disk image or using it as a virtual disk in virtual box, see footnote, we strongly recommend that you first check that it hasn't been corrupted. The potential result of not checking first, especially if you want to install Manjaro as your main operating system, should be obvious. In the best case, the installation will fail. In the worst case, a corrupted image will result in a corrupted installation. To verify the integrity of the disk image you have to download, the appropriate checksum file. This will be available at the same place where you downloaded the disk image file. For example, the file Manjaro XFCE dot 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 contains the SHA-1 checksum hash for a preview release of the XFCE disk image and will have content similar to this. You can look at that. SHA-1. SHA and others like MD5 are different types of hashing algorithms. The SHA part of the checksum file name stands for Secure Hash Algorithm. These algorithms are used to generate a hash code unique to the disk image file. The checksum file itself is just a text document that contains hash codes that should match the code generated by the MD5 or SHA algorithms. Copies of the file can be checked to make sure they are exactly the same. If the file is changed in any way, either intentionally or by corruption, the code generated will be different. Whilst MD5 is commonly used, SHA-1 and SHA-256 are newer and more secure and are beginning to replace MD5. For the purpose of checking the integrity of the downloaded file, MD5 is good enough, but SHA-1 is a better solution. The checking process is the same for both algorithms. For more about hashing algorithms, Wikipedia has lots of information under Secure Hash Algorithm. I will probably make a video to put after this showing how to calculate the SHA-1 for a download, at least in Ubuntu, because I'm coming from Ubuntu. If the code generated from the disk image matches that contained in the checksum file, then the disk image is fine. If the two codes don't match, then it means that the disk image file has changed in some way, most likely due to being corrupted. You can think of it like someone using a password to identify who they are. If they provide the wrong password, then something is probably wrong. From this point on, we'll assume you are using the file Manjaro XFCE dot dot dot. All right, checking in, in Linux. Automatic verification. 
the program SHA-1 SUM can automatically compare the checksum of the disk image you downloaded against the value in the text file. The process should be very straightforward. For this example, I first open a terminal and change to the directory where I downloaded the disk image file and checksum file. I use the command ls to check which files are present. So let's see, he cd'd into the folder, ls to see the stuff in there. He says, as you can see, I have downloaded the 64-bit XFC edition. Next, I run the SHA-1 SUM program to check against the value in the check sum file. So let's see, he does SHA-1 SUM dash C. So I just normally do SHA-1 SUM and we'll put the name. The line below shows the results, the result of the checks. In this case, it shows that SHA-1 SUM has successfully verified the disk image I downloaded against the check sum value in the file. If it failed, I'd need to download the image again. I'm going to do a video about this to put right after this. Manual verification. To manually check the integrity of your downloaded file, First, open the downloaded Manjaro file, check some file, Manjaro check some file using a text editor such as gedit. Once the check some file has been opened and the code is visible, open up your terminal and change to the directory where your downloaded disk image is stored. For example, if your disk image file is located in a directory named download, you would first change to that directory. Then you can generate a SHA-1 hash code for the disk image using SHA-1 sum and the name of the ISO file. This command generates a hash code for the 64-bit Manjaro XFCE disk image, which can then be manually compared to the code contained in the checksum file. All right, let me show you that. 